Welcome to Math 218. Uh, I'm Brian and I'll be your instructor this semester. So if you're watching this video, then you very likely received uh, an email from me directing you toward um, my personal website. It's important that you bookmark this page because this is where you're going to receive nearly everything you need for the course. So if you go to the top here and click two eight, Math 218, you'll find the main page uh, for the class. So the idea is that um, topics will roll out week to week here and uh, we'll work through a few topics a week. Now, um, if you look at the top next to the title of the course, you'll find a few different emojis, and these are really links to uh, important information. Uh, the first thing here is just um, a link to the list of topics. That's the homepage. Uh, the second emoji is this calendar emoji, and if you click on it, it takes you to an embedded Google Calendar, which organizes nearly every important um, time and date uh, for occurrences in the course. Uh, and then the next uh, four emojis are letters. So these are letters that represent the first name of someone's Zoom room that is connected to the course. The first one is a B, that's B for Brian. If you click this link, it'll take you to the Zoom room for this class for anything that involves me. So you'll be clicking that link a lot, especially over the next two weeks. Uh, the next uh, one is for Ruby. Ruby is one of the TAs. The next one is for Yu Peng. Yu Peng is another one of the TAs. And uh, the next one is for Mo, uh, the, uh, another one of the TAs. Of course, uh, uh, so all of the assignments are going to be distributed through Gradescope. So there's a link to Gradescope here. And uh, the last scroll emoji, if you click on it, this takes you to the formal, um, uh, the, uh, uh, formal policy sheet uh, for the course. So make sure you click on that and read through it. Now, um, if we uh, go back to uh, the main page, you'll see that the very first topic here, which is listed under week zero, it, uh, is, uh, has the title Welcome. So I want to click on this link and I want to walk you through um, these uh, uh, welcome slides. So I'm gonna make this big, whoops. Let's see, let's do this here. Okay, so um, this is what I'm going to do on the first day of class, but I also want to have a record of this uh, on YouTube here. So um, this is Math 218. Um, what are, who are the personnel or who are the people involved in the course? Well, there's me, your lead instructor, Brian Fitzpatrick. The URL for my webpage is bfits.xyz, and my email is bfitspat at math.duke.edu. Now, this course has lectures and discussions. I will be running all the lectures, and the discussions are run by TAs. Uh, Yu Ping um, will be running discussion one. So if you're enrolled in the 830 discussion in Allen 326, Yu Ping is your uh, TA. Ruby is running discussion two. That runs from 12 p.m. to 1.15 p.m. in Physics 047. So if you're enrolled in uh, discussion two, Ruby is your TA. And Mo is running the other two discussions. That's discussion three and discussion four. Uh, discussion three meets at 1.45 p.m. on Thursdays, and discussion four meets at 3.30 p.m. on Thursdays. Okay, so what you're looking at here is a weekly, or a typical uh, life in 218 per week. So every week at 6 a.m. on Monday, there will be lessons released on the course webpage, there will be quizzes released through Gradescope, and there will be problem sets released through Gradescope. So uh, we're, we're working on a weekly basis here. Um, now, of course, uh, we, we'll have lectures. Um, there are two of them for this class. One's at 1.45 and the other's at 3.30, depending on which one you're enrolled in. And those occur three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Of course, we'll be uh, doing this through Zoom for the first two weeks, but hopefully when we get back in person as soon as possible, those will be in White Lecture Hall um, and the room is White 107. So those are the lectures, which are run by me. And then every Thursday, you'll meet in your discussion sections, which are broken down um, uh, as discussions one through four and run by the TAs I just introduced a moment ago. Now, um, as we release topics throughout uh, at the beginning of the week, each topic will have a quiz and problem set associated to it. Typically, this will be three per week. So you'll have three quizzes and three problem sets to work on throughout the week. And the deadline through all this material is the following Tuesday uh, at 10 p.m. So material is released Monday, the following Tuesday, all that material is due. And all of this is done through Gradescope. I'll say more about these uh, uh, assignment types in a moment. Uh, now, one thing I want to mention is that attendance in everything is absolutely mandatory. Um, so I expect that you're attending everything. And if you don't, you should expect to do very poorly in the course. Now, here's how your grades break down. 
Um, so 8% of your grade are the comprehension quizzes that, I've meant, meant, that I mentioned a moment ago. Again, every topic that we cover will have a quiz associated to it that you take inside of Gradescope. Now, you're encouraged to collaborate on these, so um, you, you, you don't have to work alone, and you, can, you should seek as much help as you'd like. And, um, but late quizzes are not accepted. So again, these are released every Monday, and then the deadline is the following Tuesday. Uh, every topic also has a problem set associated to it. Um, you'll find these in Gradescope as well, but you're expected to do these on pen and paper. So um, the first thing you'll need to do is download and print the template from Gradescope. Then you should write your solutions in the template and upload to Gradescope using a scanning app. So it's important that you use an app and not just take a picture because pictures don't render well, but scanning apps convert to PDFs really well. If you have a tablet and you are comfortable writing solutions in tablets, that's fine. In fact, uh, I've found that people who do work in tablets typically write very well. So um, if you have one and you're, and you're comfortable using it, I actually prefer if you uh, use that. Again, cl collaboration and problem sets is very much encouraged, so seek as much help as you need. Um, but late problem sets are not accepted. The deadline is 10 p.m. every Tuesday, not 10.01, 10. .01, 10. Uh, and um, so, so problem sets are 10% of your grade. The next 12% are the discussions. So you are required to attend discussion and your attendance and presence in, in participation in those discussions um, accounts for 12% of your grade. Uh, if we move up to the right here, um, you'll find that 40% of your grade consists of three midterm exams. So we're going to have in-person written midterm exams in lecture. The first one occurs on February 4th. I think that's a Friday. The second one will be on March 4th, again a Friday. And the third is April 8th, I think also a Friday. So your, um, your average on those three midterms comprises of 40% of your grade. And uh, the final exam accounts for the last 30%. Now take note that the midterm exams are 50 minute exams that take place during lecture. But the final exam is on April 30th and is a three hour cumulative exam. So that's from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. The location is not known yet. So as soon as I know what the location is, I'll announce it in, uh, through the website. And um, if you happen to miss a midterm and the absence is excused, your performance on the final will make up for your, missed, uh, your excused midterm. So if you, if you happen to be sick and you uh, have uh, your absence um, approved by the dean, then um, your score on the final exam will make up for whichever of the midterms that you missed. Um, for those of you who receive uh, accommodations through SDAO, it's extremely important that you get in contact with me as soon as possible. Um, we'll, we need to make arrangements uh, for you to take exams uh, with the testing center. And the testing center requires uh, uh, ample notice. So I prefer to get these all scheduled during the first week of class. So if this applies to you, then it's crucial that you contact me and we get these uh, appointments set up. If this doesn't apply to you, then you don't need to worry about it at all. Um, now, uh, when we first started this video, you were looking at the, uh, uh, the web page for the course. Um, here, I just have a picture of it, and I explain what each of those links at the top mean. Uh, I explained that a moment ago. Um, now, in terms of resources for the course, there is technically a textbook, and this is Strang's famous Introduction to Linear Algebra, 5th edition. Um, now, we won't be using the uh, book a, a lot. Um, I've written lots and lots of my own material for the course, um, including lectures and problem sets. Um, but some students like to have uh, Strang as a reference. This is a, a very famous book. Um, and also, um, before midterms, I'll announce um, practice problems that you can practice from the book uh, in order to pre prepare for the exam. So I think um, that it, uh, this textbook is a useful uh, resource, but it is not high priority that you get it. Um, what about getting help? So there is lots and lots of opportunities for you to get help in this course. Uh, the first type of help you could receive is attendance in office hours. Now, um, the, uh, myself and the TAs will be running office hours over Zoom for the first two weeks. And then assuming that we uh, are eventually back in person, um, we'll run a mixture of Zoom office hours and in-person office hours. So here you see a weekly schedule of how our office hours break down. I have office hours uh, between our two lectures from 2.40 to 3.25 on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then I'll also have office hours over Zoom on Tuesdays from 4 to 4.45. Uh, each of the TAs has four office hours scheduled, so that's 12 additional office hours in total. So as you can see here, every single day of the week, at least one of us will have office hours, and on several days of the week, um, several of us have office hours. So 
Um, there's lots and lots of opportunity to receive help from either me or one of the TAs. Um, now, you are not limited to attending the office hours of whichever TA is running your discussion. So you should view all of these uh, cells here as opportunities for you to get help. Uh, the math department also runs a help room. Uh, the help room runs um, twice a week. I believe that is Monday and Thursday from 7 p.m. till 10 p.m. And um, those are going to be over Zoom for the first two weeks. And if you want information about that, um, I've linked to it on my website. The URL is bfits.xyz slash slash HR. So you'll find information about the help room there. Um, after the first two weeks, again, assuming that we're back in person, the location uh, will probably be somewhere in the physics building. I'll make sure that I announce that uh, uh, when, when that changes. Um, now, in addition to uh, uh, office hours in the help room, the Academic Resource Center also hosts study sessions um, for this course. Those have not been set yet, but when they are, I'll make sure to add those to um, the calendar and announce them in class. So there's lots of opportunities to get help in the course, and I encourage all of you to take advantage of these uh, opportunities as soon as possible. Uh, so I just want to uh, uh, finish the, this welcome video by making a few statements about pieces of small pieces of advice I have and expectations that I have from you. So the first expectation that I want to mention um, that I expect from all of you is I expect that you keep pace. I'm viewing this as working on a weekly schedule. So we're releasing roughly three topics every week. It's extremely important that you work through these lessons as they come out um, because procrastination really is uh, one of the keys to failure in the course. So if you keep pace, things tend to go, go well, but if you procrastinate and save everything the day before an assignment is due, um, that's not a very good way to learn the material. Um, the second thing that I, I think is extremely important is I think it's important to participate. Um, as I mentioned, I, uh, attendance is mandatory. Um, so I expect that you attend and contribute both to discussion and office hours. Um, and of course, also uh, uh, to lecture. Um, communicate. It's really important that you communicate with me and the TAs. Um, if there's something that, uh, it, that you need attended to or, or attended to throughout the course, for example, if you feel like you're falling behind or if there's a certain topic that you're not feeling strong on, it's important that you reach out to me or one of the TAs sooner rather than later. Um, if, you tend, if you put things like this off, um, these things tend to compound upon themselves. So uh, it's much easier to address issues toward the beginning of the, of the course rather than later at the course. This is the kind of thing that I always say, but a lot of students don't take to heart. So please be sure to take this to heart sooner rather than later. Um, and another thing that is extremely important for a course like this is to practice writing. When you're writing your solutions to problems, I want you to think of your solution as something that someone else is reading and not just a vehicle for you to get a right answer on a problem. Answers are not as important as well-written solutions. So this is something that I really think that everyone needs to practice with, even people who have been doing this as a professional career for many years. Writing is extremely important when it comes to mathematics. Unfortunately, this is something that's underplayed in uh, secondary education. Um, so for those of you, uh, or, or for those of you who have maybe not seen a course like this, which is very likely all of you, um, you'll find that writing is emphasized more here than it is in, in, emphasized in other courses, or in courses that come before linear algebra. Um, and uh, I also have some uh, uh, expectations in terms of conduct. We're doing a lot over the internet this semester, especially during these first two weeks. So whenever people interact with the internet, uh, people tend to go a little bit crazy. And so I really expect everyone to be nice. Um, so remember when you're communicating via like an email or even over Zoom, it's very easy for nuances to sort of uh, slip through the cracks. So uh, always try to go the extra mile to, to be nice to the people you're interacting with, especially me and the TAs. I also expect that you're patient. Um, we're distributing a lot of material over the internet which means we're typing a lot of things, including emails and lessons and maybe little pieces of code that I'm sharing with you. I've, I've, I've typed all the problem sets and the quizzes. From time to time, students will find typos and um, that's expected. So um, uh, if, you, if you come across something that's a typo, um, I really want for those to be fixed, but uh, I also don't like it when people are mean about it. So just politely uh, uh, contact me and I'm very happy to fix something. Um, miscommunications also happen as well. Um, in the past, uh, you know, I, I've said the exam will be on Thursday when it's clearly on Friday. When I say things like this, that's clearly a, a mistake. Um, mistakes are part of being human. So keep that in mind that you're dealing with humans, even though you're interacting with the uh, Internet. And also uh, misgradings happen from time to time. You'll notice that there is a regrade feature on Gradescope. 
Um, if something uh, is wrong, I certainly would like for you to use it. But um, that doesn't mean that uh, just because you disagree with the way something went that uh, you're entitled for, to points back. So I always keep regrades open, but if people start to abuse the regrade button, I tend uh, to just close it and uh, solicit uh, regrades uh, via other vehicles. So um, uh, hopefully all of you can take uh, 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 this, um, this uh, expectation to heart and just be nice and, and be patient and everything will go okay. Another thing that is extremely important, in my opinion, is that you be humble. Uh, a lot of students, uh, a lot of you, or many of you may have seen a little bit of linear algebra here and there throughout your mathematical life. But I've found that if students assume that they know too much, they tend to fall behind much faster than many of the other students who haven't seen anything before. So it's important to take the time and relearn things that you've seen before. Um, I, I found this to be an incredibly important part of my mathematical career. Um, as you learn more and more math, you realize that when you go back and look at something that you think you know really well, it's often the case that maybe you don't know it quite as solid as you think you do. So um, if you've seen a little bit of linear algebra before, view this as an opportunity to really get strong in these topics. At the same time, I'm not expecting that any of you have seen any linear algebra. And um, in a way, I think those of you who haven't seen any are at kind of an advantage from this point of view. And um, the last thing I want to say is I want you to humor me. Remember that the telos, or the purpose of taking this course, is to learn linear algebra. It's not to get a grade. It's not uh, to, uh, for me to give you a high five at the end of the course. It's not uh, to receive praise from your friends who are not taking linear algebra. The purpose of this course is for you to learn linear algebra. It's important that you keep that in mind as you're uh, doing your work. So um, please keep all of this in mind as you're taking the course. I think if you keep all of this in mind and you communicate clearly with uh, me and the TAs, we're in for a great semester. I love te teaching linear algebra. It's totally my favorite class to, uh, to do. So I always look forward to uh, teaching this class. Um, and other than that, I look forward to meeting all of you on Wednesday over Zoom.